In this video, we're going to review for Functions and Models Quiz 3. Question 1. We're given a graph and we're asked what the domain and the range is. So let's annotate this a little bit. So this graph will continue going to the left, continue going to the right. Remember domain has to do with my x values. So because it will continue going to the left and continue going to the right, your domain would just simply be from positive infinity or from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're going to grab a negative infinity and a positive infinity. Let's go back to annotating. Our range recall as our y values. So it looks like the lowest our, our y's can possibly go will be at negative 2. So our range will be just simply negative 2 to positive infinity. So I'll get from negative 2 and keep going up towards positive infinity. Let's fill that in. So we're going to grab our negative 2. And we're going to go towards positive infinity. Next question is asked about our x and y intercepts. So this is part A, part B. We have a y-intercept at looks like the point 0, negative 1, and at x-intercept, and that point looks like it's going to be negative 1, comma, 0. Let's drag those coordinates in. So y would be 0, negative 1, and the x-intercept will be negative 1, comma, 0. We have an isomtote. So let's try to, we've already started to dot it in. And this is just the line y equals negative 2. This is my isomtote. So it also is the same as your range. So let's drag that one in. Grab y equals negative 2 and pull it in. Now the last question is about whether it's exponential growth or decay. So remember if it's going up from left to right that would be growth. If it goes down from left to right that would be decay. So this graph if I trace it from left to right it's going down so this will be exponential growth. Or sorry exponential decay. Let's grab and pull that in and we're done the first question. Question 2. $15,000 is invested in an account with a 2.5% annual yield. You want to know what the growth factor is. To get the growth factor Let's clear all of our in previous annotations. So to get our growth factor, we do 2.5 divided by 100 and add 1 to it. So 2.5 divided by 100 will be 1 plus 0 0.025 
So my growth factor will be 1.025. You enter 2.5 divided by 100, you'll get 0 0.25. So let's enter that in, 1.025. Okay, what is the equation for the balance after t years? So it's gonna be A equals, next thing is your starting value, so that'll be 15,000. So that we get that information from this $15,000 here. And then we want our annual yield or growth factor 1.025 and we've answered part B for part C what is the balance after seven years so we're just going to enter in our equation 15,000 parentheses 1.025 we're going to enter this into Desmos just I'm going to clear out what I had in before 15,000 parentheses 1.025 close your parentheses and we're asking about seven years so we're raised to a seventh power and we want two decimals so it'll be 17 8 17,830.29 so I should be able to copy it copy it and let's try pasting it in so 17,830 we're around it to two decimals so 17,830.29 and we're done question two question three we're given a graph and we're told to find the intercepts and put them in order from left to right so my first x-intercept let's mark it off let's clear out the old annotations so my first x-intercept is point right here, and that's just going to be the point negative 1, 0. My next x-intercept is going to be this point right here. That'll be the point 1, 0. So let's type that into our blanks. So the first one is going to be negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. Next, we want the y-intercept. So that'll be this point right here. And that's just the point 0, comma, negative 1. Type it in. 0, tab over, negative 1. And state whether the following graph has a maximum or a minimum. So remember, when it's shaped like this, this would be a minimum. And when it's an upside down, it would be a maximum. So this has this is the upside down u, so we're just gonna type in the word minimum. And we're done. Question four. We're told the International Space Agency has finally landed a robotic explorer on an extrasolar panel planet. Some probes are extended from the lander's body to conduct various tests. To demonstrate the crushing weight of gravity on this planet, lander's camera is aimed at a probe's ground level ejection port and the port launches a baseball directly upwards at 44.8 meters per second, about, at about the top speed of a professional pitcher. The force due to, due to gravity on this planet is 29.9 meters per second squared. Assuming no winds and that the probe can scurry out the way in time, how long will it take the, for the ball to smack back into the surface? So let's clear off all of our old information. So remember we're dealing with the gravity equations. It's just one half, one negative one half, g t squared plus v zero t plus h zero g is your acceleration so g in this situation would be this 29.9 v zero 
is 44.8. And we're going to assume that since it doesn't give us any information, we're going to assume that A0 is going to be 0. So first thing we need to do to do our equation, we need to do figure out half of 29.9. So let's go to Desmos, and we're just going to go do 29.9 divide 2. And that would just be 14.95. So 14.95. So our equation would be negative 14.95 t squared plus 44.8 t. So let's fill that in. negative 14.95 t squared plus 44.8. Now, what is the maximum height? So we're going to enter this into Desmos and figure out what the maximum height is. And the directions does say round to the nearest tenth or one decimal place. So we're going to enter in negative 14. 15.95x squared plus 44.8 8x and we're going to move the we're going to zoom out just a little bit using the minus and they're going to grab the top so we have the point 1.5 comma 33 point See if I can copy that. No, it won't let me. So 14.98 or 1.498. And so that will be the time we want the maximum height, which would be the y value. So that'd be 33.6. We want the y value, 33.6. And we're done. When will the ball hit the ground? round to the nearest hundredth. So in other words, round to two decimal places. So we start on the ground, that's zero. So that's not helping us. We want this point 2.99. So we can round this up to 3.0 or just 2.99. And we're done. Last several questions go together. So the questions five, six, and seven. So the following data was created by the Philadelphia Zoological Society using the vortex model to well, basically believe will become extinct. So what's the initial population size? That's the population at year zero, so that'll be just 1,000. Is this an increasing or decreasing population or decreasing function? So you look at the population size, you can see it goes from 1,000 to 905, to 829, to 774, to 698. So this is a decreasing function. So we're just going to type in the word decreasing. If the numbers were going up, then this would be an increasing function. Let's go on to our next section. So the next section is asking us to determine whether the function best represents determine which function best represents the model of the situation, so i.e. linear, quadratic, or exponential. So we're going to enter this data into Desmos. So we're going to clear out our old function. So we're going to go to plus and add a table. We're going to type in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 15 years, I believe. So we start with 1,000 to 905. 1,000, 905, then 829, 774, 698, 582, 
483. Five eighty six nineteen. I think I missed a year. So year five, be five eighty two. Then year six goes back up to six nineteen. So I need to fix year six. Six one nine. Now year seven is five eighty two. Again. Year eight will be four eighty three. Year nine will be 390. Year 10 will be 391. Year 11 will be 433. Year 12 will be 344. Year 13 would be 313. Year 14 would be 310. And then year 15 would be 304. So we're going to hit the magnifying glass, zoom fit to, so we can see the data. So we see what looks like it could be potentially a line or exponential or could be an a quadratic. So let's start with the linear model. So we're going to enter y1. Then we're going to hit tilde. So if we hit the keyboard ABC, tilde is right here. M X1 plus so the linear model has an R square value of 93.72. So let's check out the quadratic model next. So quadratic model would be Y1 tilde A X1 squared plus B X one plus C. So the R square value for the quadratic is even better. The problem is with a quadratic, we have to we have to assume that it's going to come back up, and we don't know that information. So let's take a look at the last. We'll look at the exponential model. So we have y1, oops, new line, y1 tilde a parentheses. B, close your parentheses, up to the X1. So if we look at the R squared value for the exponential model, it's even, it's better than the linear model, but we had to assume in the quadratic model that it's going to come back up, whereas the exponential model we know it's going to taper off. So we're going to say the best model is the exponential model. We're going to get the, get the equation. So 987.216. So our argument is going to be the exponential model of y equals now we're going to get the A value 987.216, 987.216, parentheses, 0 0.917, 0 0.917, close your parentheses, raise to an 
X. Then take that off. Is the best model because it has an R squared value of 0 0.978. Oh, 0 0.9798, meaning 97.98% of the data fits the model. And we can continue arguing. We do not know that the click the population will can will turn around and start increasing. So the quadratic model does not make sense. And we're done question number six. Number seven. It says determine the population after 20 years. Round to the nearest whole number. So since we agreed to use the exponential model. We're going to type in 987.216 parentheses 0 0.917 close it raised to a 20th power. So after 20 years I'm going to grab the decimal but we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So 174.5 so the nearest whole number will be 174.5. When will the population hit 100? Round, round to the nearest year. Round up if we have to. So we're going to make this changes to an x, and we're going to say y equals 100. And we're just going to zoom out so we find the point of intersection. So we see our point of intersection. That'd be 26. Point 588. So that will be after 27 years. And we're done question seven. I hope this helps you achieve a decent score on functions and model quiz three.